Building rockets is just so much fun. Everyone talks about, well, it's not rocket science. Well, for me every day, it actually is rocket science. Hey, what's going on here? There's something about just taking fuel and turning it directly into energy that really can't be beat. I like things that are loud and fast and exciting, and rockets are all those things. Who wouldn't want to say that they go to work every day and work on rocket engines? At its core, rocket engines are quite literally the driving force behind space exploration. They're the one source of transportation that we have that is so energy dense that you can pack enough oomph into it to get into space. We have rocket engines that are designed and developed and built in the United States. With those engines, we're gonna be the leader to move forward and move farther into space. On the frontier of a natural preserve in Wisconsin, the Sierra Space Team embarks on a mission at the Badger Propulsion Test Facility, building and testing their own rocket engines. We have 28 acres as our operational area. We have four test cells and five test stands, and that's what we use for our propulsion testing here. This is the fuel bay of test cell three. These are hydrogen run tanks. They are 750 gallons each. They're vacuum jacketed. We can pressurize the system up to 6,000 PSI, and that's what we use to push hydrogen into the engine. The biggest engine we're testing is 35,000 pounds, and we can go up to 150,000 pounds on this test stand. Dream Chaser uses a specialized reaction control system to maneuver once in orbit. Known as RCS thrusters, the Dream Chaser will have 26 installed throughout its hull to help guide America's space plane into the orbital age. Working on my undergraduate degree, I had a professor that looked at the class and he said, as engineers, you are in a position to change the world. Engineers, machinists, and technicians work together, intricately planning and tooling every detailed application. I get to put my hands on spaceflight hardware every single day. It's figuring out how the heck we're actually going to put this thing together. Seeing the theoretical things happen in the physical world, that's the coolest thing up here because until something shows up here and gets tested, it's all theoretical. We don't even know if it's gonna work. You don't get a second chance once it's, once it's launched. Further and further you go with each thrust or each test, there's a new problem that arises. It requires some really scrappy ingenuity a lot of times. I consider myself more of a rocket surgeon than uh, than rocket scientists, so. <laughs> Making something to such a high degree of precision that can get strapped on top of a rocket and launched into orbit, zooming around at thousands of miles an hour. It has to be rigorously tested and able to go into space reliably and have people depend on it for their lives. With Dream Chasers designed for multiple missions, the team pushes materials to their limit, knowing that once in orbit, the RCS thrusters are the only driving force behind the space plane. The main project that I've been working with for the last year and a half has been the reactive control system, which is the thrusters on the nose and the tail and the front. I'm working on a monolithic nozzle right now and it helps with re-entry and it helps with uh, course corrections and stuff like that for docking with the, the space station. So in order to get this, it starts out like this. Uh, rare earth metal, niobium, extremely expensive, certainly don't want to waste any. Trying to get tools in all these little short little areas and crevices was not an easy task. From start to finish, just for the machine time was 24 hours. We're working on uh, uh, the interface between our combustion chamber and the nozzle itself. Due to the amount of pressure in here and the extreme temperatures it faces, it's quite the engineering task. They use the Vortex propulsion system. It takes the hot gases and instead of just directly expelling it out the back of the thruster, it causes it to spin. And when you spin those gases, you can concentrate the hottest part of that reaction right down the middle so you can actually use the burning gases to keep the thruster itself from melting. Using the Vortex technology for cooling, Sierra Space has been able to develop a revolutionary three-phase RCS thruster. Advancing technology, not just for Dream Chaser, but propulsion for a wide range of other applications. The thruster itself is a three-mode thruster. It can fire in low, medium, and high thrust modes. The low and medium thrust are monopropellant, high-test peroxide. 
But we can get 40 pounds for low, 60 pounds for medium thrust. For high thrust, we, we do an injection of RP1, and that gets us up to about 110 pounds of thrust. We're well above the 90% efficiency range for overall combustion efficiency. We can use fairly small mass flow rates to get the thrust levels that we're at. 110 pounds doesn't sound like much, but on a 14 pound thruster that's completely pressure fed, that's pretty great. It's probably the most advanced RCS thruster that's ever been developed. These systems are a huge achievement. We're building something here that uh, has never been developed before. We're doing everything we can to make sure that uh, we put a vehicle in orbit that one day will revolutionize uh, low Earth orbit. At Sierra Space, proof of concept comes as every application goes through rigorous testing to qualify for the harshness of atmospheric change, unforgiving burn and re-entry temperatures, and the vacuum of space. Each piece gets tested and refined and tested again and again. We have the bimetallic flange, uh, so one metal here, the nozzle is a completely different metal. We're having a hard time figuring out uh, how to seal between those two metals. The first thing we're going to do for this test today is make a new gasket that's going to seal uh, between the catalyst bed and the actual thruster core itself. We'll button up the bell jar, set all pressures and regulators, and then head out low peroxide and get going. So this is the test cell that we test the uh, Dream Chaser RCS thrusters in. The ability to test the thruster in space-like conditions is a real challenge, actually being able to maintain vacuum and heat at the same time, so we had to find a way to cool the hot gas so it didn't interfere with the structural capability of the vacuum chamber itself. A lot of these parts would melt and burn through in about 10 seconds or less. So we had to water jacket and spray in water into the vacuum system, which was upwards of 2,000 degrees. We'll send all that data down to the design team and they'll pick the final design for the engine that's going to go on Dream Chaser. To me, Sierra Space is leading the charge into the orbital age. We are pushing the edge of technology. All the effort that we put in here, all the time and blood, sweat, and tears that we're pouring into this really makes it worth it. After years of research and meticulous testing, the RCS thrusters are approved to go through production and get installed on Tenacity. Knowing that the hardware that I'm helping build and test will be going into space is so incredible and so rewarding. The Badger team hands off final designs, knowing their work is destined for space, playing a pivotal role in guiding Dream Chaser's journey to the International Space Station and beyond. It is just amazing to work on a vehicle like this because we're doing something that's never been tried before. We're truly reaching into the future, and it means a lot to the pages of history as far as the space frontier. What we're doing here is going to change the commercial landscape in spaceflight. There's no one else doing what we're doing. The Sierra Space Platform, it's comprehensive. It's not just a small piece of what's needed for spaceflight. It's the whole thing. It's how you get there, it's how you stay there, it's how you come back, and it is going to pave the way for how Earth interacts with space. And that's something no one else is, is doing. There's many pieces of the puzzle out there, but Sierra Space has the entire puzzle. So it's really awesome to be able to make that kind of an impact, not just on Sierra Space, but the world.